I would like to focus on the fact that Europe now, uh, the complex environment that I was talking uh, about, it's uh, somehow uh, strange because Europe is the flag, when, uh, the flag union in the world when it comes to energy efficiency, responsibility, deregulation and regulation of the regulated area. But this, uh, uh, what, what uh, brought that in uh, Europe? Um, as we saw, you know, uh, we are speaking about the, the most expensive energy resources, the most expensive uh, energy uh, prices, um, and also the dependence on uh, imports because uh, Europe is uh, the leading uh, industrial uh, union in the world. So uh, competitiveness, it's uh, under a big pressure now because while being the uh, most developed industrial um, area in the world, uh, it depends a lot of imports and on, on the same time, uh, the prices, the energy prices are the highest in the world. So um, there are some facts and figures uh, that uh, explain uh, um, uh, what I was uh, saying and uh, it is definitely that soon uh, Europe uh, needs to find a way uh, to overcome all these challenging um, and challenges. Um, the, what, what happens uh, in the Eastern Europe, uh, in Ukraine, it creates uh, just an example of how volatile this political um, and energy world could be. Uh, now, after Ukraine crisis, uh, all the uh, talks uh, within Europe energy um, uh, issues moved from efficiency and responsibility to, to security. But actually, if we um, look closer, we are speaking about the same issue. Efficiency and security are linked. And dependence on imports, it's uh, uh, also because of the um, efficiency issues that we fa are facing. So we were speaking about um, consumption and uh, volatility in demand, which brings uh, one of the um, change. Then uh, it's uh, about the increased number of distributed energy sources, also because of the um, energy responsibility, uh, which um, uh, moved Europe into the renewables. Uh, it's uh, also about grid losses and uh, the um, uh, non-uniformity within the EU countries. About, uh, and unfortunately, uh, we as a country, Romania, will have to address uh, because we are this issue because we are, uh, as we know, um, placed in the last uh, position uh, for energy efficiency in Europe. Uh, it's the higher price of the energy uh, and uh, the absence and the difficulty of creating a unified uh, internal energy market. And this is a critical point and it will be very difficult to solve it because we have so many countries with so uh, different economical uh, potential and uh, so uh, different uh, buyer, uh, buying capacity of the population. But uh, all these uh, Issues. I'm not uh, trying to claim as a final solution, but um, in order to, um, to move on to the 2030 objectives, what we need is to create a base, to create a base and a technological base where these objectives could be tangible. Because as we know, um, it's one thing to set objectives, uh, but uh, these objectives need also to be tangible. And this is about European smart, uh, super smart grid. This is a term already uh, well known, but it's um, unfortunately more uh, you know, promoted into the technical and technology uh, meetings than into the political uh, meetings. But um, uh, I, I, I'm very sure that we need to address soon also the political level this, uh, this um, uh, concept. And when we come to the European super smart grid, uh, to me, it looks like having three different components. One would be the production, where we need to address what is called the virtual power plant, which is very important because this is uh, creating the possibility of dealing 
with different uh, and distributed uh, generation solutions, not only geographically located. Doesn't matter where the, the generation plant is, it just uh, matters um, how much sense it makes to bring them together under one platform. And this is technologically possible. What we need to move now is under uh, regulation because unfortunately most of the EU countries has no um, specific regulation to deal with such uh, production concepts. Then when we move to the transport and distribution, we're speaking about what is called smart grids. And this is of course uh, something which uh, already works in several countries in Europe. But it's uh, about bringing, uh, managing the demand actually, it's bringing demand and generation together. Um, we see how uh, actual is the smart metering uh, initiative all over Europe. We feel it now in Romania, where 2014 has been uh, um, elected and dedicated by a um, regulatory body as a trial year, as a, a year for the pilots, for smart metering investments, in order to determine which are the best solution to move forward into this uh, initiative. But we are speaking about uh, huge investments and the huge in investments which has to be uh, recognized into the tariff. So we are speaking again of about uh, increasing the prices. Um, then uh, energy efficiency uh, under uh, this TND, transport and distribution uh, uh, segment, it is very important because uh, our losses are uh, huge within Europe, but also mainly in Romania. Um, but one of the main points which comes now and complicates even more the energy equation is the consumer. Now uh, we assist into uh, uh, a period where consumer, which originally they were uh, seen as uh, at the end of the chain, and maybe not so important, consumers due to regulation and due to new laws are becoming a center of the uh, energy systems. So consumers get more demanding, they need to be more informed. Um, they, as the technology uh, level increases, uh, consumers and the prices increases, Com consumers became more careful with their uh, expenses in energy. Um, and that's why um, all systems, doesn't matter if uh, um, regulations, laws, or technical systems, need to be, to take into consideration the, the consumer behavior and the uh, consumer as a, as a center of the system. So, uh, now, a lot of challenges, a lot of issues. What we have good, we are, uh, as far as I know, uh, European Union is the biggest energy market in the world. Uh, then uh, this is the buyer power, uh, which uh, EU has to use, to make use of, because, uh, of course, there is a, uh, there is a threat from, uh, you know, uh, Eastern partners. Uh, not to supply gas, but uh, what would they do with that gas if not supplying to Europe? So uh, Europe uh, with that uh, unique voice need to make use of that unique voice and try to become more conscient about uh, their, the buyer uh, power that uh, it has. Uh, then we are the biggest technologically uh, center of the world. One third of the new global technology and twice the number of technical university graduates uh, than in US. So we need to make use of this competence, try to hold, to keep all these experts within uh, EU and uh, put them at work and develop um, both uh, political and regulation solutions, but also and maybe mainly technical solution to deal with these uh, huge challenges. Thank you very much.